Hello, it's Matthew here, and we're looking at question 3, which is worth 30 marks. So we're shown 7 numbers, and we're asked to work out the mean of these 7 numbers. So before we do this, let's remind ourselves of the definition of mean, mode, median, and range. You often see these come up in the same question. They're not all in this question, but a few of them are. So the mean is the total of all the values divided by the total number of values. The mode is the value that appears most often. The median is the number in the middle when the set is ordered from the lowest to the highest. And then finally, the range is the difference between the lowest value and the highest value. So now let's go back and work out the mean of our seven numbers. So we're going to add all the numbers together and then divide by the amount of numbers that we have, which is seven. So we're going to divide by seven. So we can add the numbers together on the calculator. So adding all the numbers together, I get 95. So that gives us 95 over seven. It wanted the answer correct to one decimal place. So let's change this to a decimal. And we can do that by typing in 95 over 7, clicking equals to, and then clicking this button here that has S to D written on it, right here. And that gives us 13.571428. So to one decimal place, it will be 13.6, as the 7 will round the 5 up to 6. So our answer is 13.6. That was worth 5 marks. Now let's have a look at part 2. Part 2 wants us to find the median of the numbers. So, as I said before, the median is the number in the middle of the number set that's ordered, or of the data set, I should say, that's ordered from lowest to highest. So let's put our numbers in order. So the lowest number we have is 8. We have 8 again. Then it's 9. Then it's 11. 14. 17. And finally, 28. So we have to work out the number in the middle. So if you think of it like this, you can cancel the first 8 with the last 28, with the last number, 28. Then the second number with the second last number, the third number with the third last number, and that leaves us with the number in the middle, which is 11. So therefore, the median of those seven numbers is 11. And that's our answer for part two, which is worth five marks. And again, just to be careful there, that you must have the number set in order, or the data set, I should say, in order from lowest to highest. Now let's have a look at the next part of the question, part three. Here, we're told that one more number has been added to the list. We now have a median of 10.5 and we're asked to find the number that was added to the list. So previously it was very simple to work out the median. The number in the middle was clearly 11 as the three numbers that were less than 11 cancels with the three numbers that were greater than 11 and that left us with 11 in the middle. However, this time we're going to have an even amount of numbers, which means we're going to have two numbers in the middle. And when you have two numbers in the middle of a list, you add them both together and divide by two to get the median. So we don't know what the new number is or where it is in the list, but we do know that the median is going to be the value of the two numbers in the middle added together and divided by two. So if the new number is less than 9, then that would mean that there are three numbers to the left of 9 and 11. So we'll say, for example, that the new number is 7, and it can be any number less than 9. So I've just used 7 as an example here. Then our two numbers in the middle would be 9 and 11. If the new number added was greater than 14, so I'm going to use 30 as the example here, the two numbers in the middle would now be 11 and 14 as we have three numbers less than 11 and three numbers greater than 14. Now this is where it gets a bit harder. If the new number is greater than nine, but less than 14, so it will be somewhere between nine and 14, then the new number plus 11 divided by two will be equal to 10.5. So no matter what it is, we're going to be adding 11 to some number and dividing by two, and we should get 10.5. So if we solve for x here and we get 9, that would mean that the number is less than 9. It must be down here somewhere. If we solve for x and get 14, that would mean that the number is greater than 14 that's been added, as that would mean 11 and 14 is in the middle. 
And then if we get a number that's between 9 and 14, well then that's the new number added to the list. So the first thing to do here to solve for x is to multiply the fraction and the 10.5 by 2, and this will get rid of the fraction. So the 2 on the bottom of the fraction will cancel with the multiplied by 2. So that gives me 11 plus x is equal to 10.5 by 2, which is 21. So then I get 11 plus x is equal to 21. And I'm going to take away 11 from both sides. So I get x is equal to 21 minus 11. And that gives me x is equal to 10. So of course, 10 is between 9 and 14. So that means that the new number that has been added is 10, as 10 is now one of the middle numbers along with 11. So therefore, my new number added is 10. So that's my answer for A part 3, which was worth 5 marks. Now let's have a look at the next part of the question, B part 1. And here we're told that Ben has to pick three subjects to study from each of the three groups, group A, B and C. And we're asked how many different choice of three subjects can Ben make, picking one from each group. So basically what they mean here is how many different combinations can Ben have of subjects. So for example, you can have French, Biology, Art, or French, Biology, Accounting, or French, Biology, History, and so on. But of course, you might not start with French, you might start with Spanish, and you might go to Chemistry, and then Art. So he's a load of different combinations here. So our job is to work out how many different combinations there are in total. Of course, what you could do is write them all out, however you would be here for a considerable amount of time, and you will definitely not have enough time to do that in an exam. Luckily for us, we have a thing called the Fundamental Principle of Counting. So the Fundamental Principle of Counting tells us that if there are a certain number of ways of doing one thing, and another number of ways of doing something else, to work out how many combinations you have between both things, just multiply the total number of options to do the first thing by the number of options for the second thing. So in our case here, in group A, we have three options basically, and we have four options in group B, and then five in group C. So to work out the total number of combinations, we're just going to multiply them all by each other. That's going to be three by four by five. So three by four is 12, and 12 by four is 60. So that means Ben has 60 combinations that he can pick if he picks one from every group. So that's our answer for B part one, and that's worth five marks. Now let's have a look at B part two. So the school is gonna add one extra subject to one of the groups. So which group should the extra subject be added to in order to make the number of different choices of three subjects that Ben can make be as large as possible? So it's either gonna be added to A, to B, or to C. So to do this, let's just work out how many different combinations that Ben would have if it was added to A, how many combinations he would have if it was added to B, and then how many options he would have if it was added to group C. So let's start with if the extra subject was in A. So A would now have four subjects, B would still have four, and C would still have five, and four by four is 16, and 16 by five is 80. So that means that he would have 80 options. If the extra subject was added to group B, A would stay as three options, B would increase to five options, and C would stay as five options. So that's 3 by 5 by 5, so 3 by 5 is 15, and 15 by 5 is 75. So he would have 75 options if the extra subject was added to group B. And now let's see how many options he would have if it was added to group C. So A would remain as 3, B would remain as 4, and C would increase to 6. So 3 by 4 is 12, and 12 by 6 is 72. So he would have 72 options or combinations of three subjects. So you would have 72 different choices of three subjects if the extra subject was added to group C. So clearly there, 80 is the biggest number. So that would mean that to make the number of different choices for three subjects that Ben can make as large as possible, the extra subject should be added to group A. And that answer is worth 10 marks. So that's the answer for the final part of the question and the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I helped.